Namaste to all the yoga sadhakas. In the last video, we understood about veg and non-veg food and what is applicable to human being considering the anatomy and the physiology part of it. But after you have eaten the food, how is the food processed? What are the different stages of processing the food? And should you eat onion and garlic as part of yoga sadhana? All this was beautifully explained, taking references from Chandogya Upanishad by Dr. M. A. Alvar in Annam Brahman Talks. Check out the link in the description below to access the complete recording of the entire talk that he has given and to access all the upcoming talks of Dr. M. A. Alvar related to this subject. Thank you so much. So what happens to food when we consume it? The Chandra Gyopanishad gives a beautiful exposition with regard to what happens. So it says, Annamashitam tredha vihiyate tasya sthavishto bhagastad purisham bhavati yo madhyamastan mamsam yo anishthastan manaha So we think that the food that we consume is responsible only for our physical systems. It's not like that. It is beyond that. So when food is eaten, it is divided into three parts. So the grasses part becomes fecal matter. Then the middle part becomes flesh. Flesh in the sense, it nourishes the tissues, nourishes the body. It actually even enters the bloodstream. So the bones, the uh, muscles, the bloodstream, etc. All these are nourished by means of food. And then there is the finest part, the subtle part, which becomes the mind. So, yo anishtha tan manaha. So here the word is given from manas, the word manas. So what does this mean? What does it mean when you say manas? <clears throat> the manas or the mind that consists of several, several different, different, different aspects. So it might be the physical capability. It might be the different experiences of <clears throat> happiness and misery, etc. All these are in one way or the other, the effect of food only. So I had a Swamiji who was my friend earlier, who was also my classmate. So in a particular uh, tradition, it is mentioned that one should consume onions as part of the tradition. Of course, it is correct. But he used to say, when the day I consume onions, I feel my mind is not sharp enough. It is, it feels very lazy. So that is why in the Shastras, they talk about the classification of food, Tamasahara, Rara, Satvikahara, and Rajasahara. This classification of food that we are going to see in the subsequent lectures. So he used to say, though onion has its own very good medical effects, as a food, when I consume it, it actually makes my mind very lethargic. So in the Shastras, there is a detailed discussion because in Ayurveda, the medical qualities of Ayurveda are greatly described and says it cures several diseases. Similar is the case with regard to garlic also. But in the Smriti works, it says, don't consume all uh, onion and garlic at any cost. Then there is, there is a great debate. On the one hand, you are actually glorifying onion and garlic like anything. On the other hand, you are actually prohibiting the consume, consumption of alcohol, the onion and garlic. So what should we do? So the verdict is very clearly given in this regard when it is said that as a food, avoid onion and garlic. 
as a medicine being succeeded. Because certain footsteps, foodstuffs can act very in a very subtle manner, manner on your brain. So we see when certain foodstuffs are consumed, they induce certain types of activities and behaviors. So if you want to have certain behavior, if you want your mind to be very sharp, it should be able to remember, it should improve the memory power, etc. Then certain types of foodstuffs are being consumed. Certain types of foodstuffs are to be avoided, etc., etc., because the finest part of the food becomes the mind. 